cancer killed poor Rachel Curry as she stood in its path in the township of Rafa. She lost her young life in an act of compassion, trying to protect the poor people of Gaza whose homes are destroyed by tank shells and bulldozers. And whose plight is exploited by suicide bombers who kill in the name of the people of Gaza. But Rachel Curry believed in non-violent resistance, put herself in harm's way as a shield of the people, and paid with her life in a manner most brutal. But you who philosophize disgrace and criticize our fears, take the rag away from your face, 'cause now ain't the time for your tears. Rachel Curry had 23 years. She was born in the town of Olympia, Washington, a skinny, messy, list-making chain smoker who volunteered to protect the Palestinian people who had become non-persons in the eyes of the media, so that people were suffering and no one was seeing. Or hearing, or talking, or caring, or acting, and the horrible math of the awful equation that brought Rachel Curry into this confrontation is that the spilled blood of a single American is worth more than the blood of a hundred Palestinians. But you who philosophize disgrace and criticize our fears, take the rag away from your face, 'cause now ain't the time for your tears. The artistic. Director of a New York theater canceled a play based on Rachel's writings, but she wasn't a bomber or a killer or a fighter, but one who acted in the spirit of the Freedom Riders. Is there no place for such a voice in America? That doesn't conform to the Fox News agenda. Who believes in non-violence instead of brute force? Who is willing to confront the might of an army whose passionate beliefs were matched by her bravery? And the question she asked rings out round the world. If America is truly the beacon of freedom, then how can it stand by while they bring down the curtain and turn Rachel Curry into a non-person? Oh, but you who philosophize disgrace. Criticize our fears. Bury the rag deep in your face, 'cause now is the time 